I always wanted to hang the, a painting and, a, and this graphite stretcher together. I was going to ask if you ever installed. No, I haven't, and I really wanted to. Because it's like, well, that apparently is a painting, and that's apparently a sculpture, but they seem, they're about the same size, and they're both flat on the wall, and they're kind of doing the same thing. And it's like, so who says why? Yeah. That, that kind of difference is, is, um, is, is useful as a way of trying to keep making things, I find. Uh, it's chewed chewing gum, yeah. Chewed by whom? Chewed by me or um, kids. I, I paid. You, you come and pluck it out of their mouths? And... <laughs> Actually, I, I gave kids, um, students or anyone, uh, pieces of plexiglass and I paid them 50 cents a piece of gum, and I give them the gum. They would chew it and stick it on the plexi and bring it back. So you can get about 49 pieces of chewed gum on a sheet of 12 inch by 12 inch plexiglass. And it's, it's pretty, so they could do the work. It's the, so you could, they could be doing what they're doing and chewing gum. And then they bring it back to me and I pay them 50 cents. So then or, or, and sometimes we, I mash it also. Well, and then, so the gum becomes pigment, it becomes the paint. Yeah. It also becomes the sculptural material. So you then manipulate yeah. the gum. Yeah. So those are quite labor intensive to make. Yeah. So then you stick the one on the left and then you trace it and flip it over and glue the one on the right. So they glued. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. It seemed obvious. Having made the first ones, it seemed logical to make these ones. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Logical to whom? <laughs> I know. I don't know. Yeah. It's yeah. Exactly. So is 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 walking in the street still the key inspiration for a lot of where the work begins? Yeah, it is actually. I find. Yeah. Less than other texts or. Well, know, it's both. It. No, I, I guess it's both. I I, I guess I find walking I, living in a city uh, tr releases stuff from 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 what you're reading from other things. So, or listening to, or looking in the paper, or whatever. I find like the combination of the stuff that goes in your head and the stuff that you stumble across on the street or, or, or in your life together um, sometimes makes something happen. Like, like, like uh, a mirror that you remember from a shop, a store, or a step stool you know, that you saw in your friend's studio, or, or that you bought, or um, the, the, the ATM machine in a deli. Um, it's like that combined with something else that you're not sure about makes, gives you a way of making something. But the ATM is so loaded in a different way. I mean, not only because it's loaded with cash, but yeah. you know, and I know the American Express card in, in the yeah. other exhibition, so it seems like currency and exchange recurs in your work in a number of different ways. I find it's the signs came from the idea of walking down the street and what if all of this, the language around you, um, is is unavailable? Um, what what if uh, the the sign that's saying "come in" is actually saying "come in except for you"? Uh, in in the way that advertising, you know, like you see a Banana Republic ad, and it's like five young kids looking beautiful and selling something. But there's there's so many ways that that can be read. I mean, that can be received. Like it can it can be aspirational. It can be um, exclude. It can exclude the viewer. It can um, it can make it can mean so many things to different people. So I was like, so I, I guess the sign that says you know sorry we're sorry, which is the first sign I did, is like I'm sorry I can't give you anything. In fact, I can't. I can give you so little that I can't even give you another word. So I'm going to give you the same word I gave at the beginning, which is sorry. So it makes this loop that's closed and completely um, un, uh, unbreakable. Yeah, totally. Really weird. Total, yeah, really weird, uh, and that's weird what, promises. And for whatever um, reason, that's something I thought about when I was thinking about your work, because there are a lot of yeah. foreclosed opportunities that you're kind of ta not taunting people with, but I mean pointing, drawing attention to. Um, yeah in the exchange value that we have, you know, in this society, I suppose most societies in the world, but. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, like desperate promises and broken promises and delusions. 
like, like an, air, an air conditioner, um, a real air conditioner, is, uh, I, I find is a very melancholy, weird object because you're desperate. It, it's it's, it's uh, altering nature. It's making. I mean, I remember the first time I saw an air conditioner. I was, my mother's from New York, and we went to America when I was about maybe six or seven. And I remember being in a hotel room, and there was this big machine at the, like this level blowing cold air. And I remember thinking, that is really weird and wrong, and kind of appalled by this thing blowing cold air at you. And, and I think there is like, this idea of trying to control um, the nature. Uh, you know, ultimately, the, the, if you extrapolate that, that the one place you, you're really unable to control nature is when you finally start to fall apart and die. <laughs>